<laughs> Hello. Hola. Konnichiwa. I can't, I can't. Hello, what's up? How you doing? This is Sushi, also known as Erica. Thank you so much for coming here and clicking on this button. Please like, comment, and subscribe if possible. Just to introduce myself, my name is Sushi Potato. <laughs> and you probably think I am this crazy girl or crazy chick on the streets that talk to random strangers and show you the crazy nightlife scenes of Japan. I want to tell you I'm actually quite normal. I promise, I swear. It might not seem like it, but I am actually quite normal. <laughs> so let's go off with the basic questions first. What is my name? My name is Erica, with a K, or Sushi, whichever you want to call me. How did I get the name Sushi Potato? Sushi is for my Japanese side, and Potato is more for my Irish side. And I thought they went really well together, so I named myself Sushi Potato. And now everyone just calls me Sushi, so feel free to call me Sushi rather than Erica. I think I respond more to Sushi than Erica at this point. Just letting you know, biologically, my mom is Japanese. She is full 100% Japanese, was raised in Japan, but around college she moved to America, and that's how she met my dad. And my dad is Irish and Polish, but he is from America throughout his whole life. Just his ethnicity is Irish and Polish. When they got married, they had me first. So I am technically Japanese, Irish, and Polish. But to be honest, I'm not even sure. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, where were you born and raised? So I'm actually born and raised in Joycey. After a little bit of time, I wanted to pursue myself as a violinist and violist. We moved from Joycey to New York City in order to pursue the dream of music. At that time, my brother was playing cello, so my brother was going to pursue the cello, I was going to pursue the violin, and I ended up going to a performing arts high school where I had to audition and I got in. After that, my life just became around music all day. And also I did soccer. So my whole life was pretty much doing music in the weekdays, one day on the weekend, then playing soccer. And so those were the two things that really kind of built me up as a person when it comes to like sports teams, also concentration. And yeah, that's kind of my life the whole time. <laughs> my mom was like a soccer mom. My mom was driving us to music lessons. It was, we were all over the place. But around the time when it came to college, I ended up going to a conservatory um, to do viola and I was really practicing viola there and I didn't want to do viola anymore. I realized I'm quite a very extroverted, I like talking to people and so I decided that maybe this wasn't the route for me, it wasn't. Around the first year of college I dropped out and I ended up working at Uniqlo, which is a clothing store in America and I also worked at Wegmans which was a supermarket, very very well known um, supermarket in America and the whole time when I was working at the supermarket I just loved talking to people I really loved getting to know what people did in their lives how their career turned out because I was so curious on what I wanted to do so pretty much when I was working I was pretty much studying at the same time studying how people did why they chose this career in order for me to figure out what my career would be and at that point I said I wanted to go to Japan and so I applied to a few colleges and I ended up getting accepted to one and I moved to Japan. I said bye to my whole life in America, moved to Japan and started, you know, living the life, trying to find out what my other 50% of my roots were in Japan. And I gotta say it was very hard. The transition from America to Japan was probably the hardest thing ever. Yeah, it was very hard because I was living by myself. I was lonely. My mom went back to America. My brother was still, you know, finishing up college, not college, but high school in the United States. So I was actually alone in Japan and I was trying to get adjusted to understand the culture. I've visited Japan so many times in the past as like a vacation, right? But when I actually moved here, it was completely different. It goes 360 degrees. People just don't treat you the same. People, yeah, just people can be really mean. <laughs> it's just like they don't really understand racism where I came from in America, where racism was taught every day. Like you shouldn't be like this, you shouldn't be like that. And so when I came here, I was like, whoa, people are just really rude. <laughs> That's just my thought. So it was quite a very hard and challenging process to get adjusted to the system. 
So I went to college for four years here, I got used to it, I realized that I don't want to assimilate to the culture, I don't. That is just because if I'm ever going to be treated the same, then I, may, I might, but to be honest, I will always be treated differently, so it didn't really matter. I just assumed for me that I would always be a gaijin my whole life, no matter how much I try to be Japanese. I get a lot of comments about like anime and how this person doesn't respect the culture and I think it's kind of bullshit because respecting the culture is one thing but no matter what, you're not going to be like everyone else especially if you don't look like them. That's one thing. It doesn't matter about your actions or anything like that. People will treat you differently because of the way you look. And I think a lot of people don't realize until they get to Japan and they just assume from like the anime all the world like video type content. <laughs> I'm all over the place right now but I'm just saying that this is quite a big thing I think that people don't realize and yeah I was in college I graduated and I was going to have this really awesome full-time job I was so excited to be able to start working there right but the COVID pandemic happened. The pandemic pushed my graduation, not my graduation, but my working half a year later. And so I had a lot of free time. I didn't really know what to do because I was done with education. I was getting ready for my full-time job. So I thought maybe it would be best to do YouTube. So right when this happened, I started a YouTube channel with two other friends, my brother and also Arch called Half and Half. We posted a lot of Japan content where we tried like Daiso products, Don Quixote products, like everything you can think of. We, we dressed up like a sumo wrestler and it was just really fun, really fun content and I enjoyed it. And so during those times we would do as much as possible because we wanted to be consistent, we wanted people to really enjoy the content that we put out. Arch, he likes games, right? So he decided to go into more gaming route and there's a platform called Twitch. So Arch went to that platform called Twitch and I got kind of curious, what is this platform? We are doing YouTube, but and I realized it's not just for gaming, it's for other things as well. Like there are a lot of people who just sit down and talk to people. So around the summertime, I was saying to myself, I want to try it. So I started doing Twitch and I was just a sit down streamer, enjoying my time, talking to people. People were super nice. I was talking to people from all different countries and I loved it because I love talking to people. So it was something that really kind of brought out like really happy vibes for me. And I liked it because during COVID, no one wanted to hang out because everyone thought they would get coronavirus. So I thought this was a really good chance for me, you know, just learn about others. And at the same time, I didn't even realize that there was so much money involved with Twitch. I, I was so surprised that you could talk to people and you could also make a living off of it. It didn't make sense. I was like, it's like I'm talking to my friends. And so I ended up growing from that. And then I saw some people doing like IRL in real life in Japan. And I was like, oh, this is, this is gonna be super fun. I wanna go outside with the phone and show everyone Japan. That sounds amazing. And I did it. I started getting my IRL set up. It, it's a lot of things, guys. The IRL gear has a lot. We'll make a video on this. We were trying to mentally prepare ourselves for this. We were excited and we were full on ready. My brother was also into it. Arch was into it. We were all into doing in real life streaming in Japan. And then my career just exploded a bit because I think there was a lot of like really funny clips, I would say. But I think throughout doing IRL as a woman, it got hard because there were times where people will come up to like random guys, they'll say a lot of like weird things about going to hotels and stuff. And I noticed there is a trend in all the female streamers who go through this where guys hit on them, right? And they get really shy and very vulnerable about the situation. I didn't like it. I didn't like how men could be so dominant, especially in situ situations, and the girls have to get scared and freaked you know, freak out in every type of way. And so in my mind, I was like, why do we shy away from these things? Why, as girls, do we have to shy away from all these shitty people on the earth that do these things? And there are clips of me being very shy, trying to walk away. I realized, what is the point of doing that? So my whole vision changed and I decided that it's best to provoke the scene, meaning stand up for myself. Stand up for myself, play along with them, and see what they are going to ex expect from this. I didn't like how it was such a pattern for every girl, so I wanted to do the 360, 180 degree opposite of what girls do and try to see what happens. So that means that like, if a guy goes, oh, very, very 
big boobs, I love your big boobs, or something like that. I will be like, oh, you like my big boobs, really? That's and you play along with the crowd. Ever since I was little, I loved taking drama classes and I loved doing improv and it's been such like a passionate thing for me. I would do it always on the side. And I feel like I can just do things that I am not as a real person. Like for me, my everyday day-to-day -day life is very normal. When I turn on the Twitch camera, when people come up to me, say really stupid things or really provocative things, I do things that I probably would never do in my life. Because what do people do in that situation? Me, when I watch other people, I always wonder if that person acted differently, what would have happened? And so I thought this could be a great idea to do because no one does it. Everyone shies away, shoes away. I wanted to see what would happen. I wanted to test the crowd. And that's kind of what I did. And I started making all these things like banana mayo. You know, I talked to people, ask really silly questions, absurd questions I would never ask. Because you know, in Japan, we're supposed to be polite. Girls are supposed to be polite. Girls can go out at night. These are all the things that I see in the comments. And I, I'm like, that's so sad. You want a girl to be locked up, not being able to go at the nighttime, stay home because she needs to be a good girl. It's crazy. I wish sometimes people in the comments can really see girls in the same equality way. And it's really sad, like, because the way you dress, the way you do things, or whatever, you should still be treated the same. Just because you dress differently does not, does not mean that guys are entitled to touch your boobs or do anything with it. And I think this is one thing we need to change. We have to respect each other. That It doesn't matter if you're a gender, it doesn't matter what kind of clothing you're wearing, you're giving excuses. The actions of others is okay. So for me, this is the reason why I put out this content. And a lot of people say like, oh, she might not be safe. I come from New York. New York was very unsafe. Japan, it's a lot more safe than New York. And I've dealt with all these catcalling, all these things when I was five, since I was like quite young. Every day on the streets, I would be catcalled, I would do this and that. I am mentally prepared and very sure because it's been done with the street smart. I have done with the street smart. And the stuff that I do in Japan is completely different, but I do have a sense of street smart in me. The thing is, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm still in one piece. I'm doing normal things. I work a full-time job on top of Twitch, so it's fine. It's fine. One thing I wanted to let you know, though, is that streaming is not my full-time job. I think a lot of people think the streaming is my full-time, but I actually work a very vigorous job from Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Streaming for me is just a place where I can enjoy, you know, have drinks with you guys, a place where I can, you know, have conversations with you guys, catch up with you day to day. And it's a place where I just have fun with you guys because you're like my friends. That's kind of how I'm treating Twitch at the moment. Yeah, that's kind of my life. <laughs> yeah, I just, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what else to say. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll make a part two on these series. I kind of was just blabbing my whole life <laughs> story. But other than that, please like, comment and subscribe. And yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye!